Hello, I'm Julian from the Vulnerability Research Team. And in this short demo, I uh, want to introduce SourceWarp. Um, you can find the sources of SourceWarp um, under this URL, um, which is the free and open source base for the Vulnerability Research Team. Uh, you can find installation instructions and some background information on the readmeMD file. Um, so um, SourceWarp is a um, testing and benchmarking tool uh, for CICD tools and DevOps platforms. So it's an SCM driven record and replay framework, um, which basically means that you can, uh, in the configuration file of SourceWorp, we can specify what are the files that you find relevant. And then um, SourceWorp will look through the Git commit history, will try to extract those commits that match the constraints that you define, and uh, then it will uh, sample um, a set of patches uh, which are then replayed on the target system. And that makes uh, SourceWorp a good testing tool for data-driven decision-making because you can um, record and replay slices from the Git history. So let's imagine you would like to uh, compare two tools that implement a certain feature. What you could do is you can um, basically set up two target systems where these two variations are running, and then you can use SourceWorp to we play the same uh, slice of the Git history on both systems, and then while you are replaying it, uh, you can observe how these two systems uh, behave. So you can extract metrics, and then you can compare these different metrics. So we have two different modes of operation. One is API, and the other one is Docker mode. Um, API mode basically means that you are communicating with some um, GitLab instance that's not running on your system, and you can use Docker mode if you want to uh, just um, uh, benchmark and test uh, things locally. So in this section, I would like to um, show you how you can use SourceWorp in Docker mode. So if you have like a, um, a feature that you would like to uh, evaluate benchmark locally, you can use Docker mode. And in this section, I will just show you how we can do that. So let's walk uh, through uh, some of the configuration parameters. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, SourceWarp can be used to extract commits from a source repository, and then we can replay um, the relevant commits uh, that are relevant with respect to the feature we would like to benchmark or to test on a target system. And the target can be also a GitLab project or it can be a target Git repository. Um, so first we have this credential section here where we can define tokens, like authentication tokens that we may require for the source of the destination. Um, uh, if the source, for example, is a GitLab project um, that's not public, then we may require um, an authentication token. And the same is true for the destination. Uh, so we have the, these two replay modes, Docker or GitLab. In this case, we have Docker mode, which means that we're doing everything locally. Um, at least um, the replay part uh, is done locally. Then we have a record store. This is uh, on the file system as a directory where we're storing uh, the Git repositories um, as well as the patch, uh, the, the basically the patch set that we are going to replay on the target system. Then we have uh, some filters here. Um, this is an irrelevant filter, a relevant filter. Um, these are used to extract um, or to look into the Git history and tend to extract only those commits that are that are relevant. Um, so it's very common to not include the GitLab CI YAML file because this is the actual CI configuration. So you can imagine that if you're playing something on a target system and you would um, just propagate the GitLab CI YAML from the source to the destination, then you would basically sort of inherit the same CI configuration, which we don't want to do usually because we want to run some benchmarking on the target system. Uh, where we don't want to necessarily run all the CI jobs that are executed on the source. Um, then we have an override steer. This includes um, some files that we would like to uh, to, 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 to override. Um, uh, for example, it could include a custom GitLab CI configuration uh, that we would then just use on the destination system, for example. Then we have some, um, some polling settings. This is mostly relevant for the um, the API mode. Um, so if we want to fetch some metrics or information from the target system, um, let's say we um, we want to 
to download um, uh, the um, the SAS report um, that includes like security findings. Um, then this pod attempt just basically says how often we would like to retry the download. And then also we have an interval, which is the, the time frame within uh, two pod attempts. Um, and the metric script is uh, executed within these intervals here. So the metric script can be used to basically extract whatever information we would like uh, to uh, to extract from the target system. Um, then we have the patches per MR. This is essentially the, the patch sampling number, which means that um, if we, like, say, extract um, a set of like relevant patches from the source system, and uh, it, uh, we would like to group them together in, into um, a, a certain number of merge requests. So um, this number here tells that source rope how many patches uh, it should group uh, together into a single merge request on the target system. This is also only relevant um, if you're using API mode. And then we have some, some settings from the source and the destination. So um, first we have the endpoint, which is also only relevant for API mode, um, which would be in our case gitlab.com. Um, we have the setting for the um, default branch name from the source, which is in our case main. Um, uh, for all the repositories, it would be master. And then uh, the source project. This is only like the slug from the source project from which we would like to extract information. Um, then the dest um, GitLab endpoint uh, is the same as the source one usually. Um, and we also have uh, the same default branch setting for the destination. In this case, we leave the destination project blank because we're using Docker mode, so um, which means that we don't replace stuff on a Git uh, GitLab destination project, and then some Docker specific settings. Um, so the um, destination out file. This is uh, for Docker um, for the experiment we are, we we are about to run. Uh, we expect an out JSON file to be generated, and this is the artifact that we're actually picking up, and then we we extract information. Um, from this artifact. Uh, and then we have an image uh, that we would like to, to run. And in this case, it's a, um, it's a, it's a test image. Um, and I will explain in a second um, what this image includes. And then we have also a command that we would like to execute locally. Um, so these here are only relevant if, you, if you're picking the Docker mode. Um, and it basically tells SourceWorld what it should execute in, in Docker mode um, locally. So as input project, uh, we are using um, this small Ruby project, which has 112 commits. Um, so it, it doesn't have like a too big of history, but it's just for demonstration purposes. Um, so the Git repository we are using um, doesn't really matter. So um, it's basically just the repository from which we are sourcing test input data that we are going to replay on a target system. Um, yeah, so this is just an arbitrary pick because it has some Ruby code in it and um, um, some some commits or so short history. Um, so this is what we're using as input. So let's uh, do a benchmarking exercise together. Um, let's assume we have um, um, we have a CSCD tool called Ruby Parser. This uh, is a um, CSCD tool that basically just parses Ruby files. It's based on the uh, Ruby Parser gem and um, it's including a run RB file that just takes a project, run, runs over all RB files that are present, and then tries to feed those RB files into the parser, and then keeps track of uh, all the files that it was able to parse and the ones that it wasn't able to parse, and also keeps track of the parsing time. Um, but uh, this is only for the sake of the example. Um, SourceDrop doesn't make any assumption about the CRCD tool that uh, is used for testing, but um, I wanted to keep this example um, short and understandable, so I included this run RB script. So let's run a benchmarking exercise uh, using the source project that we saw earlier, the bumper project that will serve as the input from which we're extracting um, commits from the Git history uh, using these filters here. So we will only um, extract commits that don't touch any of these files. Um, you could also specify uh, we could, if we wanted to, we could specify this allow list fi uh, filter here uh, so that we would only extract changes um, that are touching RB files. But um, 
um, yeah, and then after replaying um, a single patch, then every time this metric script here is going to be evaluated by source world. Um, and what it does here in this case, it will just um, take the the JSON file that's produced in this case by the by the uh, the Ruby parser project, the um, what we saw earlier, that includes like the information about parsed files. And um, it, it will just essentially reflect information back. So it will parse the our JSON file and then um, it will return these data points here that are then collected by SourceWorld and will store it at a central place. Um, and uh, the information we extract are just fast files and unparsable files um, and then some timing information and a timestamp um, that's just keeping track of the the, the point in time um, at which this date, this item here um, was generated. Um, so that's what the metric script are doing. As you can see, they are fairly small, and which is um, usually the case, uh, um, uh, uh, usually um, the case for, for most benchmarking exercises. Um, and they can be used um, in this case to extract information from locally generated files, but um, also um, for, for fetching data from GitLab itself. So if you're running in an API mode, then you can also download artifacts using the metric script and then only extract the information you're interested in um, for your benchmarking exercise. But in this case, um, the only thing we're doing is we are essentially taking the JSON file that's produced by uh, the Docker container. So when running the Docker image, um, and then uh, we are parsing out certain fields we're interested in and then recording them in a central place. So let's run the record step. And in this step, we would like to extract a slice from the Git history uh, that um, fits the constraints that define our configuration file, um, but also um, fits into a certain time frame. And the time frame is specified or is specified as um, a command line. Uh, parameters so you can specify this with the since flag the beginning of the time frame and with the until flag the end of the time frame and this will um, basically tell source rob what's the time frame to look at and then also apply the constraints specified in the configuration file on the different commits um, that are part of this time frame um, but yeah so let's run this and this will extract the patch sequence from the source repository so you can see here that we are looking at the source repository and then we are um, writing out a patch sequence um, that includes the changes applied on the files that fit these constraints here. So uh, now let's just replay the patch sequence that we generated here um, on the target repository. Um, and we're using Docker mode now, so this means that um, we basically replay these patches one by one. So we we basically take the source Git repository, we um, copy it over to a target repository, and then we um, take the initial state of the target repository, which is the first um, commit from the starting time frame. In this case, it's the 1st of January 2019. So we take the, this is basically marking the initial state of the target repository. And then we take um, all of these patches and we're playing them one by one on the target repository. And once we've um, applied a patch, then we um, run the CI/CD tool. Um, in this case, we would um, we would run the Ruby parser, um, uh, and then we basically ex execute it, and then we extract the metrics from the execution using the metric script. So the metric script uh, basically takes or fetches the the data after the application of every single patch, and um, after the execution of the CI/CD tool that we would like to test uh, using SourceWorld. Um, and then as output, we are combining all of these metrics. So we're collecting these metrics and adding them to a CSV file so that you can um, see all the different data points in, in, in one go um, after the replay step is over. So let's do that. So we can now just um, run the um, run local script and then we use the replay flag and once we start this, you can see um, that we are starting to apply patches. Um, then 
Docker is executing executed. Um, this is actually the uh, the parser Ruby parser Docker image that we saw earlier. Um, and um, yeah, now we just have to wait until this finishes. So the metric scripts they fetch the metrics after every patch application and after every execution of the CI/CD tool. So now we're done. Um, as you can see, uh, we have now a source rob metric CSV directory that's been generated by this execution. And if I'm printing now the parsing CSV file, you can see it contains or includes different data points. This is what the information is provided by the metric script. Um, it includes information about past files, about unpassable files, about the time um, the execution took from the CSD tool and the timestamp for um, this spe specific uh, data item that was returned at this point in time. Um, and this, these are exactly the data points that are produced by the metric script and then collected at a central place by source rob and then stored in the CSV file. So this is an easy way how you can use source rob to do a robustness testing or evaluating um, a CRCD tool. Um, but in this specific use case, we are just looking at a single CRCD tool, but you could also use it to compare different CRCD tools. Um, let's imagine that we would have like a, a number of parsers and we would like to know which one of these parsers is the best one in terms of, um, of speed, but also in terms of um, number of parsed files versus unparsable files so that it can digest process as many files as possible. Um, so you could do that by just replaying the same slice of the Git history on two target systems. One target system you would have uh, the first CSD tool running on another one, a second CSD tool, and then you could just generate this data and compare the results once you're done. Um, yeah, and this is how you can use source warp in Docker mode. And in this section, I want to show you how you can use source warp to replay slice of the Git history um, in API mode. When using source warp in API mode, um, we need like a target project. Uh, this is the project um, on which we would like to replay the um, patch sequence. Um, and I already selected here the new project uh, tab, and then I can create a blank project. I will just call this test target. And I'm going to use my private space here, and uh, we can make it a public. Um, project in this case. And then we also need access tokens, uh, or one access token. Um, this is the access token we require for the replay step. Um, one is for the API, and the second one is for the right access to the repository because we, we are going to change the repository, so we will modify files in it. And the API um, um, permission is required to create merge requests and um, and I will give this owner access. So we can just use this token for the test um, project variable of source warp, and then we are all set and can um, start replaying patches on the test target project. So uh, let's use source warp to replay the patch sequence on our GitLab project. Um, so have, let's have a quick look at the configuration first. So the main differences in comparison to the Docker mode configuration is that we now have the replay mode GitLab um, instead of Docker. And also the um, test project points to uh, the, the GitLab project. Um, this is now this, this lack of the project that we created earlier. Um, and then we also have the um, overrides. So there's a variable that's called overrides dear. Um, this is only um, used in GitLab mode and it's used to override files in the Git repository. Um, this is useful, for example, if you 
um, want, want to change or modify the GitLab CI configuration. Um, so in many cases, the CI configurations are also stored in the Git repository itself. And um, uh, you may not want to run every single job that's listed in the CI configuration. So you can use an override to just run the CI CD jobs you're interested in that are part of the benchmarking exercise, for example. In our particular case, um, we want to evaluate the Ruby parser project. Um, this is our the CI CD tool we wanted to, to evaluate. So this is the only tool that we actually actually adding to the CI CD config so that we don't need all the um, jobs that are configured um, on the source repository. And um, for that, um, we can have a look at the temp override steer. And there you can find the GitLab CI configuration. And this is the CI configuration that we are going to use on the target system. Um, so the old one is basically replaced by this one if the source repository um, has one. And um, this here is basically just a single job that's using our Ruby parser um, a Docker image. And then it's just running the ONRB script. script. It's exactly the same what we also did in Docker mode. It's just using run RB and then generating an old JSON file. And um, the metrics script, um, after every single execution, fetches the auto JSON files that are generated by the CICD job. Um, and we can maybe have another look on the script here. So this is um, the part of the script that fetches the out.json file from the um, as an artifact essentially after the uh, the CICD job uh, parser job is finished and then it does the same thing as um, we did with the local uh, uh, docker um, image which is basically just extracting these fields and then uh, collecting them and storing them in a central place um, so um, with that we can um, run the replay step. So uh, it's the same as before, just bin run local replay, and then we are replaying the patches on the target system. So the execution of source warp in API mode is now finished. Uh, you can see that it basically did the same thing as we did with Docker mode, only that we um, replayed the patches on the target system, the test target repository. Um, so you can see in the test target repository that there is a number of merge requests that have been created automatically by a source swap um, and also accepted and merged in automatically. And um, we also have a number of jobs here that have been spawned and um, uh, and basically, these jobs here, they were uh, configured in the GitLab CI YAML override that we saw earlier. So this is um, essentially our override here that's just running our parse uh, parse job, our Docker image here. That's the CI CD tool we wanted to test. Um, and then the metric script that ran on source group, um was waiting for the CI CD tool to finish and then collect the artifact um, through the GitLab API. And all of this information is then collected by SourceWorp at the central place. Um, it's the same as before. It's in the SourceWorp metrics directory. And you can see um, the same as before, um, the number of parsed unparsable files, uh, the time it took to parse them, and the, some timestamps attached to every single data point. So this was a quick demo of um, SourceWorp. Thanks a lot for your attention. If you're interested and want to know more, you can always check out the GitLab project. You can find all the installation instructions and um, everything related uh, to the setup here. And um, contributions are also always welcome. So um, thanks.